Hey, um, I don't know how to say this, but we need to talk. And no, no, it's not me. It's, it definitely is you. Like, this is 100% a you problem. But I need to bring it up. We need to talk about your Dungeons and Dragons. Yep, and Pathfinder. You see, recently, tabletop RPGs have been trending front and center. And I love that. I love tabletop RPGs. They allow you to stretch your creativity, get lost in a mystical world, and and be the, the person that maybe you wish you were, or maybe live out your fantasies of being an evil necromancer hell-bent on taking over the world. I personally run character concepts through tabletop campaigns. It's the best way for me to get inside my characters' heads when I'm coming up with story concepts. I really get to learn how they operate doing this. Heck, I was once part of a 300-person Dungeons & Dragons server on Discord. We had dungeon masters for each major continent. They, they would liaison with smaller dungeon masters that were in control of certain kingdoms and plots of land. So when your party entered a region, the dungeon master for that region would start directing it. And because all the dungeon masters were in cahoots with each other, you ended up with this incredible sort of like tabletop MMO experience. Oh, it was so good until it fell apart. <laughs> but that's kind of why we're here. You see, recently both Dungeons & Dragons and Pathfinder, they've been in the media saying things like that they're going to do better and cater to more people. Um, and by, by that, they mean that they're removing the things that a minority audience have deemed problematic. This includes things like racial stat bonuses and monsters and monster descriptions that they find offensive and problematic themes from the game's law like slavery. And that's actually a huge problem. You see, this is Storytelling 101. You have a villain and your hero needs to overcome adversity and rise up against these forces of evil, overcome them, rescue people, be a hero, be, be a character. Unless you're playing a villain, then you want these things so that you can be a villain. Um, your heroes need to suffer and not let it break them. Or maybe it does break them and one of the other players saves them. And then that player motivates your player to recover. That's called a redemption arc. That's the hero's journey. And by having racial stats removed... I mean, the racial stats allow you to create interesting player concepts that have their own sort of negative penalties stopping you sort of Mary suing it. And not that there's a problem with Mary suing it. It has its time and a place. But these penalties allow you to get creative with figuring out how to solve problems. Like, take, for example, a half-orc thief. It's not a very good combination, but it's incredibly fun to figure out and play. These rules create interesting problems through adversity. They allow you to use adversity to create a more in-depth character and grow with that character and destroy the adversity, thus making yourself flourish. It might sound stupid, but by tackling these uncomfortable topics in media, be it movies, video games, book, tabletop games, whatever it is, you, as a person, are able to tackle your own fears and the things that make you uncomfortable. And that might even make you a more confident and open person and improve your social life and, and, and the people around you. I know when, when I was a kid, I would sometimes insert the problems I was having in school into my Dungeons & Dragons campaign so that I could be the hero that I wanted to be and overcome these issues. But by removing these concepts from the games, you're kind of tearing down the playground, the jungle gym, the sand pit, and replacing it with picnic benches. It's kind of boring and flat, isn't it? And the kids don't have anywhere to play anymore and learn and scrape their knees. And finally, tabletop RPGs, for lack of a better word, are open source. They're one of the only mediums out there where you can literally homebrew up and edit everything. No one was forcing anyone to play with these rules in the first place. 
They can edit them. They can remove them. They can change the stories and they can write their own stories. That's the power that is tabletop games. So you could design your own campaigns. You could make your custom races. You could choose not to even look at statistics and just have a narrative experience if you want. I've played plenty of campaigns like that. So, I mean, you the player have the ability to remove these choices from the campaigns with your friends. You can sit down with them before you even start because a lot of prep goes into these things and you can say, hey, this is my idea for the campaign. Is everyone comfortable with this? No? Okay, I'll go and change it. And funnily enough, I as a player and other people have the ability to reintroduce the content that has since been removed. So in the end, nobody wins. Everyone's left with a muted, boring experience. It's a burger without the meat. It's, you know, it's, it's a core ingredient taken out from the recipe. And we're already seeing indie tabletop games outselling Dungeons and Dragons and Pathfinder campaigns. So I guess in the end, what I want to say is stop acting like spoiled children and eat your damn vegetables. All you're doing is ruining dinner for everybody else. And can't you see the irony in that? 